my dad is from Jamaica, proud, proud Jamaican man, and my mum is uh, English. My dad's side is from St. Vincent and St. Lucia, and then my mum's side is Nigerian. I have Jamaican uh, all on one side, and one of my grandparents was Nigerian as well. My dad is from Algeria, and my mum is from Kenya, um, so I'm North and East African. We're in the heart of Brixton, for many, the epitome of multicultural Britain. We're at the Black Cultural Archives to talk heritage. So why does heritage matter? I think heritage matters because it's, it's identity. I think it's important to um, have that sense of pride about who you are and maybe more importantly, where you come from. So having those conversations with my grandparents, with my parents about stories from back home, it just, you feel connected to um, somewhere else and obviously very proud to be um, born in Britain, very proud to be British, but having that, that extra spice, I guess, having that, that identity, I think that's the most important thing about heritage. How do you marry being British with your West Indian and, and and ba your background. Well, it's actually something I wanted to ask you guys about. We represent the country. I mean, like, we will, we've been to the Olympics. You represent <laughs> London, I guess, on, like, a, on the equestrian deck scale. How does it feel representing Britain, but then very much being connected and feeling like your identity is rooted in African and Caribbean roots? Do you guys think about that? Is that something that yeah. you're aware of? Yeah, definitely. Like, definitely. Yeah. Oh, sorry, go Growing up, I, I don't know if you guys had this, but I definitely had like a weird identity crisis where I was like, who do I stand for? Yeah. Can I have a duality? Can I stand for both? And when, yeah. do I sh when do I step up as a black woman? When do I step up as a hijabi? When do I step up as a British individual, a Londoner? And like, I think just picking and choosing your moments. Well, I think the way I balance it, especially like representing Great Britain at the Olympics is, um, you know, my grandparents came here for, they came here to work, first of all, and they came here for a better opportunity for their children and their grandchildren. So that's kind of always what I've had in my mind when I've been representing um, GB is me being able to do what I do, I kind of see it as a way of... Um, Honouring them. Yeah, exactly. Fraser, can we, can we know where we're going if we don't know where we've come from? I feel like you, you can know where, you, where you're going, but it, when you've got that core background and the education and the understanding and the knowledge, I feel like it can just broaden your horizons like, even coming down here today to Brixton, like, I'm speaking to these guys and they're, ba they're telling me basically you're in Jamaica now. And, uh, <laughs> and, 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 but I understand because I, I can see the culture and it's very different, you know, to back home. I'm a little bit of a different, um, like, upbringing. Like, it was always everything, like, the food. Food food for me was, was the big thing, do you know what I mean? That was, that was not forced on us, but it was cooked. It was like, yeah. it, was, it was always there. So, so you had to eat. So, yeah, so, so, so it was like, I had no choice, otherwise I was going hungry. It was like one of them, so. <laughs> but, but when I say, and I feel a bit, you know, and it's something which I, I want to slap myself for because I feel like I don't know enough. And I'm still learning now. Mm. And, and I just feel like, I, I hate saying it, but one, but one day, you know, my, my elders, my family aren't going to be here to, to teach me, so I'm going to teach my kids. So I do feel like it's definitely an area in, in what I want, to, I want to learn, I want to get better at, in educating. I, I, know, I know enough, but I feel like I have, this, all, with the time and I have and the resources I have, I should know more. But like I said, on the food thing, like, embarrassingly, I, I can't cook a dish. I can't cook a dish yet, and I, you know, I'm embarrassed to admit it, at this big old age of 31, and it dawned on me the other day, you know, when I just, I, just, I went to, I went to a, um, a festival and someone gave me a, a jerk, a jerk um, rub and seasoning. And I was thinking, what am I going to do with that? <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, 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 but what I should, uh, like, I feel like I should know. So I always say uh, my, my pride is British, but my strength comes from Jamaica. And, yeah. I, and, and I really believe that because exactly like you say, when I was wearing that tracksuit in the Olympics, I had a massive, massive following in England and everyone was getting behind me in my whole town and everything. But I also know that in Islington, Jamaica, on yeah. a place called Clark Lane, there was a bunch of people in front of a not so big TV <laughs> screaming I and shouting. You know, yeah, feeling. Screaming and shouting <laughs> and, 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 and supporting. So what I can tell you is 
I'm so proud of, of the place that my father grew up because it made him the person he is, mm. which ultimately made the, me the person I am. Yeah. And I can never go away from that. So, Imani, in your sport, do you tend to gravitate to the people who look like you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Asking her. <laughs> no, I would say that I tend to gravitate to the people that do the same events as me, and the majority of those people happen to be yeah. Yeah, black yeah, Londoners. Yeah, yeah, I won't lie. Yeah, um, but for me, sport's always been a massive safe space. Talking about heritage, like my Caribbean heritage was absolutely introduced to me through sport, through cricket. I'm named after Brian Lara. My family are obsessed oh, with cricket. Respect West to Indian you. Cricket. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's yeah. awesome. That's sport awesome. for me was a place where maybe growing up, being from Peckham, I didn't have a lot of expectation to achieve crazy things. And sport was the space where I could dare to dream. You're living the dream, right? <laughs> you know, you're doing what you what you oh, sure, love yeah. to do. How we know that that caused shockwaves, you know, outside of your community, but what about inside your community? What did they make of the fact that this hijab wearing Muslim black woman was riding horses. Liz. Um, I mean, a lot of them were like, we've never seen this before. Maybe we should see it more. Um, I've got young girls and young boys even messaging me, like, how do I get involved? Um, I think it's been very overwhelmingly positive and very uplifting. I feel like now there's a weight on my shoulder. As Storm, you said, <laughs> heavy is the head that <laughs> carries the crown. <laughs> I'm, I'm now, like, realising that I'm going to have to carry this sort of responsibility because I have a name out there falling off a horse is a big deal like like seeing people people immediately know as soon as I drop to the ground that's Kitty Jamela she's she's wearing a hijab like you can't hide from it and things go wrong when you're on a horse a lot more often because horses are unpredictable I want to ask you Olympian something mm -hmm. the Commonwealth Games because I'm wrestling with this mm. originally the Empire Games yeah. Yeah. we all know the, the connotations yeah. how do you marry representing a country that actually overran where you um, where you originally came from and took you to the place where you all feel is part of your heritage. Oh. I just came from the Commonwealth Games actually and a lot of us athletes were having this exact same conversation. A lot of us athletes from African and Caribbean backgrounds said it's amazing because it happens once every four years. You might only go to one or two but at the same time we felt like we were betraying our culture and our family and our history. If I'm honest, it's a mixed bag of emotions for me because I do think that Commonwealth Games now are rooted in better values in terms of humanity and equality, but you can't forget the past. To broaden that out, I read something that, that you said. You said, um, your dad said to you once, black men climb the rough side of the mountain. Yeah. What did he mean? He used to say that to me. Um, kind of like to prepare me that whatever, we're never gonna have the smooth side, it's always gonna be the rough side. So he, he'd prepare me like the toughest, roughest way to get to the goal, that's gonna be the way you're gonna have to do it because just, that's just how life is for us. And the, uh, to finish that, what he also used to say, the, the good thing about going up the rough side of the mountain that it forces us to be excellent. Well, it's been a great pleasure to listen to you all, listen to your stories and your wise words. And I think it's someone has got to teach Fraser how to cook rice and peas. Oh, so we'll leave man. it there. Bro, all you want to do is bring it on. Bring it on, let it marinate 24 hours, bro. We'll, we'll, we'll teach you. First thing my dad did, get in the kitchen, this is how you bro. cook it. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Guys, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Thank, Thank you. you. Superb very much. job.